Hello and welcome. It is story time with Alicia Hagen, your art teacher. Okay, I'm not an art teacher anymore, but I was an art teacher. I was an art teacher for eight years. I have some stuff to say, so I am going to say it. I have been glazing some new cat mugs and I'll probably put them in the kiln tonight, take them out tomorrow afternoon, maybe. Um, I'm really excited about these. But what I have to say has nothing to do with my pottery. It has to do with art teaching. I have a story or some advice that I've been thinking about that I've tried to put into words on a video multiple times throughout the years, but it just doesn't come out right. I don't exactly know how to articulate it as well, but I'm going to try again. So this story is for new art teachers, uh, struggling art teachers, or people who think they might want to be an art teacher eventually. Um, this is some advice for you. <sighs> not every teaching job is going to be the perfect fit. You're not going to feel like the best art teacher in every position you get. If you get hired somewhere, and you're not feeling good about it, you don't have to stay there. And there's probably a better fit for you. So this is the story of how I've been hired, fired, and teacher of the year. What? A lot of people don't know I've been fired from an art teaching job because my last job, like, I was amazing, you're the best, oh my gosh, you're so cool, you're so good. You're the best art teacher ever. Like I've been told that a lot and I'm like, oh, thank you. I didn't always feel that way. I mean, I don't all, I don't often feel that way, but people tell me I'm a pretty good art teacher and I'm like, thanks. But I definitely haven't always been that way. All right, let's backstory to the beginning. In 2015, I graduated with a BFA in art education and I got my first job before I graduated, I was hired in April and I graduated in May because I went to a teaching job fair and met people in person, had my resume ready. It is not too hard to get hired as a teacher, even an art teacher, if you have all the stuff prepared, like you have your license, your credentials, your education, letters of recommendation, a good resume, like have your stuff ready and prepared and you can get hired, especially if you're willing to move different locations. If you're like, I'm stuck in my one town and I need that one art teacher's job, but they're not retiring for 20 years. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. But if you're willing to move around, there are jobs out there, even for art teachers. So I got this job and it was a very unique school, but I, I think it was a really good first experience for teaching for me. It was at a ninth through 12th grade charter school, but it was kind of more like an alternative school where a lot of the kids from the regular public school who couldn't handle it due to like anxiety or just like overwhelm, they would come to our school and there were quite a few behavior issues, but there was only like 150 kids in the school. It was very laid back and it gave me a lot of opportunity to explore, experiment, and create whatever kind of lessons and classes I wanted, which also led to me burning out because I was way overworked. I was creating so many different classes that, like I was like comic book class, animation class, digital art, a recycled art class, um, sculpture, but we didn't have a kiln, so we didn't have, I didn't do any clay for three years. So I worked there for three years and I felt like that was good experience. I'm gonna pause real quick and just ask a little question here. So I do the number three like this. Oh, I got some glaze on my hands because I can't do the number three like this. If I bend my thumb, this finger bends. So I can't do the number three. So I'll either do this. Oh, I don't do that ever. I do like this, but does anyone else have this problem? Like you can't do the number three? Okay, back to it. I worked there for three years, and by the end of it, I was pretty done, burnt out mentally. I was just like, 
oh, I can't do this another year. I worked really hard. I lived alone most of the time. I had my cat, but I would be at the school all the time. I worked for free a lot. I had a club that I did for free, actually spent money doing because I would provide them snacks with my own money. And I was just tired. And Northern Minnesota, it was very cold. So I wanted to get out of Minnesota. And luckily, my boyfriend got a PhD program in Texas. And it's so much warmer there. So I said, hey, I'm going to go with you. So I moved across the country to Texas with no job and just followed him. And it was warm. It gave me a chance to stop and like mentally uh, refresh myself after three years of work, 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 work. So I kind of doodled around. I, I got an art studio in a, like a little community art studio location. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just like living off savings. And in November, I went to a teaching job fair that I almost didn't go to, but I'm glad I did because I was hired at two different schools from this job fair. Not, all, not at the same time, but I'll tell you why. So I went to this job fair, divvy out my resumes. No one was really hiring for an art teacher. And I was like, whatever, it's something. But a month later, I got a call from a school nearby that was like, hey, we need an art teacher in January. Can you come interview? And I was like, okay. I maybe am not a, like super um, refreshed yet, but I'll go interview for you and check it out. So it was a school about 20 minute drive from where I was living. And I was like, this is cool. So I went up there, interviewed. And before I left the parking lot, they called and said, can you start next week or not next week? Can you start? Like they hired me before I even left, which I'm going to give you some red flags here. If they call you that soon, they are desperate. <laughs> they are a little desperate. Uh, but I agreed and I was like, yeah, cool. I have a job in January. But the more I got to know about why I was being hired in January, the more and more I was like, this is is crazy. <laughs> so I started working January at the school and I, I shadowed the current teacher for one week because the semester ended one week into January and she was still there. She had worked there just, I think a year, a year and a half. She didn't have a teaching degree. She went to school there actually. It was a um, high school again. So I, I was going to teach sixth through 12th grade and that schedule, ooh, I'll have to tell you that in a little bit, but I shadowed her. And I had asked her, so what did you teach all year so far so I can pick up where you left off? And she told me, oh, a little bit of everything. Just start from the beginning. And I'm like, the beginning, what do you mean? And she's like, oh, just go back to everything. We did a little of this and that. And I'm like, what did you do? But she didn't have any details or lesson plans or structure or anything. And I was like, okay. So I asked like, well, what supplies do you have here? And she's like, oh, we haven't been... I haven't bought anything all year because I'm just trying to use what's in the closet. And when I went in the closet, it was just like piles of just stuff. And it was overwhelming and there wasn't enough stuff. There was like no colored pencils. There was nothing. And I was like, okay, I'll have to put in an order for stuff. And then I asked about like past art teachers and they said they had 10 art teachers in the last 10 years. Another red flag. If you've had 10 art teachers in 10 years, one teacher a year, that position is either cursed or it's not good. Like that's, that's not somewhere someone wants to stay. And I'll tell you more about why someone would want to stay there. Okay, so after shadowing, I was like, all right, I got this. I can be the art teacher. I asked them like, do you have a curriculum for the all these classes I have to teach? And they're like, curriculum? It's the state standards. Like, look at the state standards. That's your curriculum. State standards are not a curriculum. Those are benchmarks, but it doesn't tell you what to actually teach, when to teach it, how to teach it, which is great for art when you don't have a set curriculum and you can invent it yourself. If you're only doing like art one and two. So let me tell you my schedule. I had to teach art one, art one, art two through four, four, art two through four, like a combo of mix, sixth grade art, 
combo of seventh, eighth grade art and a theater class for ninth through 12th grade. So I essentially had one, two, three, four, five different preps, not including like the two through four. I didn't, I was like, how do I mix all these things? Um, every day I had one prep period and a lot of different classes to figure out how to teach. And the one that kind of tipped me over the edge is teaching theater for seventh through 12th grade. I think I said ninth or 12th, seventh graders through 12th grade. I had like 15 kids in there and they range from seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th graders. And having that kind of mix of kids was not a good call. This is like enough work for two teachers. They should have had a middle school teacher and a high school teacher, but it was all packed into one. And starting mid-year with that kind of schedule and telling me that, let's just start from the beginning. We have no curriculum. That is so much work. I was going in every day like anxious. And actually every week I started to get panic attacks. I started like crying all the time because I felt so overwhelmed with the amount of work I had to like come up with. I was never prepared. I didn't have enough hours in the day to be prepared. I had a mentor teacher, but she would come w when the bell rang and she would leave when the bell rang and we did not have the same prep or lunch. So I never talked to her. She wasn't an art teacher. She was a different subject altogether. I just felt like I was drowning immediately. And it was the worst experience of my life. I was coming in on weekends. I organized the closets. I was trying to make some posters for things. I was trying to get into it, but I just felt like this is not for me. I'm not cut out for this. I am the worst teacher. They're gonna fire me, which led me to more panic attacks, more crying. And eventually I did get fired. I kept telling myself, I'm gonna make it through this semester. I'm gonna make it through the semester. I can make it till summer. I can make it till summer. I can do this. But I was leaving work crying every day, not in a good place. I mean, I was also in therapy. Um, when I would drive home, I would think about like, oh, I could just crash my car and the stress would be over, which is not a good thought to have. You shouldn't be thinking that way at your job. So eventually, two months in, it was just too much. I was just like not thinking straight and I did a stupid mistake. I was used to the charter school, which was really like free flowing. There's a bathroom right next to my classroom. And like, sometimes I could go in and out, but the kids were usually watched, but I was dumb. And I had the, the advanced art kids in my class. And um, I forgot my water bottle in my car and decided, oh, I need to go get my water bottle. Like this is a big classroom. I have to talk a lot. I am so thirsty and my throat hurts. I'm gonna quick go get my water bottle. So I left the kids in the classroom. They were like 17, 18 year olds. And I was like, you'll be fine. And I got my water bottle from my car, but it was right past the admin office. Um, and they saw me do that, get my water bottle and come back, which I know this, I was not in the right state of mind. I was like, they're old enough. You are not supposed to leave students in a classroom alone ever at all no matter how old they are no matter how young they are like they need to be supervised all the time nothing bad happened they were fine they were doing their drawing but that was that was a mistake Whew. and i know this now i know this like never leave kids alone whether they're 18 or five definitely not if they're five but it probably took me three minutes to go get my water bottle and then come back so that friday they had pulled me into the office and they're just like, no, no, you can either be terminated or write your resignation letter. And I was like, okay, I'll write a resignation letter, which now I know I should have been terminated because then I would have gotten like some um, unemployment money, which, yeah, but they, they made some little, little comments about, um, well, if you get terminated, it'll be on your permanent record and you'll never get a job in the state again kind of thing, which I never got a job in that state again. I never used them on my resume for the next job. Like, it's like it never even happened. It doesn't even exist. But now that I'm telling you, it kind of does exist. Um, so 
I left that job. I was actually so relieved. I was not upset. My like, it's like a weight was lifted from my shoulders. I was not stressed out anymore. Sure, I needed some money, but I was like, I am just going to chill for a moment. It was March, I believe. So I just chilled around. And then by June, I was like, man, maybe I do need a job. And that's when I got hired at my favorite job. I went from high school to elementary and I never thought I was going to teach elementary. Like, oh, what a different kind of thing. I didn't think kids were for me. When I went to that job fair last November, um, there was a couple guys who were just like standing around and they had like cheetah prints and leopard print, tiger print vests on and I was joking around with them. I think I gave them my resume. Maybe I didn't, but I was just like, eh, hey, how are you guys doing? And they, they were from a school four hours north in New Mexico, not in Texas where I was. So I was like, ah, I'm not getting a job here, but hey, how are you guys doing? What's going on? And in June... I saw that there was a job opening for their district. And I was like, hey, I remember them. I'm going to apply and see if they remember me. So I applied for it and they remembered me and they thought I was awesome already. So I interviewed, got a job at this elementary school, had to move to a new city, which is just fine. I was ready for it anyway. Um, yeah, I, I got this job. I started teaching elementary art. It was tough at first and then bam, COVID hit online learning for a full year. When we came back from online learning, I was like trying to do a lot. I, I love that school. I still overworked myself, but I had a lot of fun. The kids were great. My coworkers were great. Everything was amazing. And my third year there, again, three, <laughs> Three, three. My third year there, I was nominated and voted as the teacher of the year for their school. Went to a lovely banquet and like had a party. Uh, it was great. And I ended up teaching there for five years. By the end of the fifth year, I think I had overworked myself too much. It was a really good fit. I felt like I could actually do this job. Like I actually felt like a good art teacher. The last two years, I kind of overworked myself. Like the thing that pushed me over the edge was deciding to do an after school club. So I had a two day a week after school club my fourth year as um, a craft club. And I thought it would be really relaxing and it wasn't. Then my fifth year, I was doing a pottery club after school. And I thought, again, this will be great. I love pottery. And it wasn't great. It was stressful. <laughs> And I also took on the yearbook my last year, which I actually loved doing that, but of course it's just a little extra work. Um, but doing those clubs kind of pushed me over my limit and I decided like, I need a break. I just need a break. And I think if I go back to teaching, it'll be, it'll be probably relatively easy to find another job. But that was a good fit. I've had some okay, I had my first one was an okay fit my middle one, which I don't talk about. I don't put on my resume. I don't even like mention. Ellie, my little doggy is growling. So that the middle one was not a good fit. And then the last one, my third one, super good fit. I loved being there, but now I'm working on my own stuff and having a good time. So that's my story. It was really long but that's how it goes. So good luck in your, if you're going to be an art teacher, good luck in your endeavors and finding a good fit for you. I know there are some people that find their perfect fit and they stay there for like 30 years and then they retire and that's amazing. But that did not happen to me and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with having new experiences and doing new things. So we'll see what the future holds. Thanks for listening. If you stayed this long, have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful life. Bye.